Hello, sisters. <clears throat> Lesbian Psychologies, Explorations, and Challenges, Part 1, Identity, Essay 3, Sexuality as a Continuum, the Bisexual Identity, by Rebecca Schuster. Understanding bisexuality is essential to lesbian psychology. Descriptions and theoretical frameworks of bisexuals' lives provide, a vital, provide vital information toward a comprehensive understanding of the origins and lifelong evolution of sexual choice, the parameters and potentials of relationships, and the mechanics of heterosexist oppression and effective methods of eliminating it. In addition, many bisexually identified women define themselves and visibly function as members of the lesbian community. A complete picture of lesbian psychology examining personal identity, interpersonal relationships, and the social institutionalization of and political resistance to oppression must include these women. I have used interviews, survey results, observation, and a review of what psychological research exists to consider the nature and implications of bisexual identified women's experience. I will focus here on women who, at least privately, call themselves bisexual. I will not address the experience of those who are actively bisexual without conscientiously adopting that identity. I will use the term bisexual woman hereafter to refer to women who identify as bisexual. To generalize from bisexual identified to all bisexual women, however, risks creating a distorted image of bisexuals as self-defined feminists and deliberate activists. Many bisexuals and homosexual activity, sorry, many bisexually and homosexually active women do not consider their lives in terms of conscious identities, deliberate political positions, or intentional affect, affectional communities, and feminist literature frequently excludes their experience. Defining bisexuality. Bisexual women make individual contextual decisions to love and make love with women and men in their lives. They make complex choices within and across different periods of their lives. By definition, bisexuals defy categorization. Some of them, sometimes, are contemporaneously bisexual in intimate relationships with both men and women. Men and women. Some of them, sometimes, are sequentially bisexual in a series of relationships with people of both genders. Others are indefinitely monogamous or sexually involved with a series of people of one gender. They define themselves as bisexual on a theoretical basis. There is no bisexual stereotype. That is the center of both their significance and their challenges. I am going to present as particular examples the case stories of two bisexual women, Allison and Barbara. Both Allison and Barbara use an open-ended definition of bisexuality. Barbara, a 30-year-old healthcare worker, defines bisexuality this way, quote, for me, Bisexuality is having partners of different genders. It doesn't mean having multiple partners at the same time, but it does mean being open and having the possibility of men and women in intimate relationships, end quote. Allison, a 36-year-old childcare worker and parent, simply states, quote, bisexuality means being open to having a relationship with either a female or male person, and that covers all facets of relationship, end quote. So the term bisexual it's used colloquially among bisexual women to refer to both activity and potential activity, both sexual and platonic relationships. Bisexuality and lesbian oppression. With few exceptions, 20th century American girls have been raised within the constraints and the expectations of social, political, and economic heterosexual culture. Therefore, to those a bisexual, to choose a bisexual identity or any identity other than heterosexual is subversive and each stepwise thought or action towards a bisexual identity is an act of subversion. Although most people have at least occasional desires, fantasies, or dreams for sexual partners of both genders, perhaps a third have a sexual contact with partners of both genders at the same at some time in their lives, and few openly identify as bisexual. An infinite array of internal and external circumstances influence tentative or consistent bisexual experience and identity. Margaret Mead points to lesbian activity at one sex institutions as evidence of cultural limitations on bisexuality. For example, female prison inmates who have, whose behavior has been exclusively heterosexual develop lesbian relationships during detention and then return to their heterosexual relationships upon release. Other women who consider themselves heterosexual or lesbian may participate in repeated or long-term relationships contrary to their 
usual gender choice. Allison explains her transition from a heterosexual to a bisexual identity in terms of simply becoming aware of that possibility. Quote, We're taught that we're heterosexual. The movies you see, the books you read, are all about how this girl falls in love with this young man. That's the whole direction you're pushed in. I would say, definitely in my case, that if someone had said both genders are possible are possibilities as sexual partners a long time ago, I probably would have said, oh, both are possibilities. And it really would have been, oh, you're a person and therefore I can be with you. If somewhere I had read one book that said this is a possibility, it would have been a possibility, end quote. Women who identify as bisexual see themselves as sexual dissidents allied with lesbians, refusing to conform to heterosexual culture. Barbara expresses it in this way. Quote, I think it feels just as alienating to me as it does to lesbians. It doesn't make me feel any more a part of the heterosexual group to consider myself a bisexual. I still feel like I'm on the fringe, but my lifestyle is very different. If I was mated to a man, I don't know if I would go to the white veil route with a diamond ring. I probably would have felt alienated in an average group of heterosexuals, even with a male partner. That's who I am in terms of my lifestyle, as opposed to my sexuality, per se. I feel more like the token dyke, even if I do consider myself bisexual. I don't think that gives me any more comfort." End quote. So a bisexual's experience is one of nonconformity, a personal choice to act against heterosexist cultural constraints. Mass culture, psychology, and history invariably leave bisexuals hidden among heterosexuals and lesbians. Research on the lesbian community has been confounded by substantial numbers of bisexually active individuals characterized as lesbian based on even just one lesbian relationship. In addition, many women reclaimed as, bi as lesbians by feminist historians actually lived bisexual lives. Bisexuals will gain public and theoretical visibility as the lesbian and gay liberation movement successfully legitimizes all that is not heterosexual. Thus, bisexual women owe their growing visibility and freedom to act on their lesbian desires to lesbian and gay activists and feminists who have demanded sexual rights. A 1984 poll of Boston Bisexual Women's Network, BBWN, members revealed that bisexual identified women are predominantly young, nearly half under 30, 99% under 40. These women reached adulthood in a period of lesbian rights activism, necessarily recognizing lesbianism and thus bisexuality as an option in their lives. Public bisexuals endure much of the same oppression as their lesbian friends and lovers, often losing jobs, family, friends, and emotional security. Their experiences echo lesbian experiences of coming out. They are misunderstood and mistreated because they break cultural rules about intimacy, sex, and gender. The core of bisexual women's oppression is lesbian oppression. Heterosexist society defines bisexual based on their lesbianism. They are not 50% oppressed. Coming out in public, sorry, coming out publicly is a risk Allison is just beginning to take. Quote, first I talked to a couple of women friends who I knew were sympathetic to gay people. With my mother, I've talked about my cousins who are gay and how I really want Carla, her daughter, to be whoever she wants to be. At work right now, it would be absolutely crazy for me to talk about it, but at some point in my life, I don't want it to be a dishonesty, end quote. Allison's comments are barely distinguishable from those of a lesbian in the common context of a heterosexist culture. Coming out as bisexual. Bisexuals undergo an internal as well as an external coming out process, gradually arriving at their personal identity and gradually sharing it with others. The diversity of bisexuals' individual histories makes it difficult to generalize about those processes. Informal discussion with bisexual women discloses a wide variation in early adolescence and adult sexual development 
Events leading to identification as bisexual, patterns of monogamy or non-monogamy, structure of primary and additional relationships, and current visibility as bisexual. Allison and Barbara's stories, although by no means represent representing the range of bisexual experience, provide two examples. Allison's first memory of sex play was an attempt to act out the content of a sexual joke she learned at the Girl Scout camp as an 11-year-old girl. Quote, I remember a female friend of mine came over and we wanted to take pictures of each other with no clothes on, and I remember we tried doing whatever it was those jokes were about. I'm not even sure whether we got were clothed or not, and we didn't even touch each other's genitals. We just sort of, we were just sort of moving together and we decided the whole thing was out of our realm. Somehow we were going to get in trouble for that. I didn't have a label of lesbianism or anything, end quote. Although Allison believes she was a, quote, she has a, quote, tendency to want to bias her sexual history towards homosexuality, end quote, she describes a series of adolescent crushes on women, quote, teacher after teacher, end quote, she says, quote, and some of them are my mother's friends, though not in sexual terms at all, end quote. At 15, Allison had her first boyfriend, quote, I remember not being the least bit impressed with a heterosexual relationship. The idea was that I had a boyfriend, and that was something important to tell a friend of mine, end quote. When Allison was 17, she met Dave, her first male lover, and she relates, quote, It became very important to me that Dave and I were together, end quote. Two years later, after a period of non-monogamy, which Dave initiated, they were married. Later, while Dave wanted, to, wanted a monogamous marriage, Allison, quote, wanted independence and was involved with some other men, end quote. After a crisis in 1974, Allison and Dave, quote, made a decision that we were going to survive as a couple and become monogamous, end quote. Their daughter Carla was born in 1976. Eight years later, Allison became interested in sexual relationships with women, quote, it started in my sociology class where a woman came in and talked to us about her childhood as an abused child. It had nothing to do with sexuality, but I was fascinated by her as a person. Later, we had a class about lesbianism and she came again. It was the first time in my adult years that I thought about the whole subject or issue of lesbianism. And then I read coming out stories and everything I could get my hands on for about a year and began feeling more and more as though that was who I was, only that I didn't fit in with the fact that I was married, end quote. In 1984, Allison saw an ad for a meeting of a local bisexual women's organization and attended it. Quote, it was such a relief to find a group of people who said you don't have to choose one way or the other. You can love all people. Gender doesn't have to be the basis on which you decide, end quote. Within a year, Allison developed a sexual relationship with another bisexual woman, Elaine. Dave supported the relationship and and Allison was happy to continue her marriage while spending up to three nights a week with Elaine. Quote, I had my own mind, I had in my own mind hoped I would be involved with both of them for a long time. I felt as though I had the energy to cope with it, end quote. Elaine, however, decided after several months that she wanted to return to being friends with Allison. Allison describes that change as a painful one and remains in a period of healing and uncertain introspection about her future relationships. Barbara tells her story beginning in high school when she thought of herself as heterosexual. Quote, I never did have a lot of relationships. In high school, I was pretty much kept to myself, did a lot of babysitting. I had one in involvement with a man who was very sensitive, fit the gentleman kind of role. In my first couple of years at college, I was embarrassed that I had gotten to college and was still a virgin, and therefore kept myself isolated. Because of the fear of having to admit that I still had a lack of experience. And finally, I had my first sexual relationship with a man when I was 21 or when I was 20 or 21, end quote. After college, Barbara continued a series of sexual relationships with men. Meanwhile, she was exposed to feminist and leftist political thinking. She began working in feminist health in a feminist health center in 1979 among both heterosexual and lesbian feminists and by 1981 sought, quote, a feminist household where there was a lot of flexibility and openness, end quote, to various sexual preferences. Barbara fell in love with one of the, one member of her new household, quote, I began to feel that I wanted to share more than a friendship because we shared such a common life and dreams about living, 
I didn't feel like I was that definite about women, but that this one woman was a woman I wanted to pursue relating to sexually. So it was a real individual choice. And then I've slowly become more woman identified and more interested in women, end quote. In the course of that relationship, which lasted a few months, Barbara began calling herself bisexual. During the period, during the same time period, she built a circle of friends who actively supported her in that relationship and a subsequent series of sexual relationships with women. Barbara now hopes to find one woman who will become her lifelong quote unquote partner. She calls herself quote, she calls herself a quote unquote bisexual lesbian, presently interested in women, but acknowledging an attraction to men she may someday choose to act upon. Little research has investigated the route bisexuals take to this identity or any common qualities of those who identify themselves as bisexual. Often women fall in love with someone of an unexpected gender and the power of that relationship pulls them to reevaluate their identity. For both Allison and Barbara, that aha occurred within the context of a developing consciousness of lesbian and women's rights. In order to arrive at a bisexual identity, a woman must confront her images of a dichotomous sexual options, societal lesbian oppression, her own internalized homophobia, and particular myths about and resulting mistreatment of bisexuals. Allison exemplifies bisexual women who retrace their histories for any precedence of attraction and love for women and men, and relate stories of temporary struggle to conform to heterosexual or lesbian identity. Some, like Barbara, settle or hope to settle in a long-term monogamous relationship with a woman or a man. Meanwhile, such women maintain a bisexual identity in order to remain personally honest about their bisexual desires or to present a political vision of utopian relationships. Bisexuals define their identity in terms of their particular personal relationships rather than as an abstract gender preference. Their common thread is their willingness to incorporate flexibility into their identity. sexuality as a choice. At this moment in human sexual history, the presence of bisexuals conspicuously reopens the issue of sexual choice. Bisexuality undoes the rigid lesbian slash heterosexual dichotomy. What emerges is a continuum of sexual choices, a continuum that is threatened to those, threatening to those who have imposed a categorical definition on their sexuality versus those, probably those few who are in reality completely lesbian or completely heterosexual. <sighs> Bisexuals do more than reveal a third sexual category. They uncover a range of sexual and emotional attraction and closeness, an infinite variety. To place all human beings into one of two or three sexual boxes is then absurd, denying the breadth of individuality of human sexuality. Such categorization, whether it's a theoretical standpoint or a political stance, reinforces societal divisions that for, form the, ma the mainspring of lesbian and gay oppression. <clears throat> Furthermore, bisexuality unravels traditional notions of the immutability of sexual identity. Bisexuals contemporaneously or sequentially select sexual partners of the same or different genders, demonstrating that these choices can vary over time and opportunity. Sexuality then differs from race, ethnicity, or class background. Underlying any bisexual identity is an assumption that all sexuality can be chosen apart from culture or counterculture expectations. The more spontaneous and contextual a woman's choices are, the more free she is from societally imposed and internalized limitations. Her self-determination is her full intelligence, transcending reactive responses to social constructs of, of sexuality. Many bisexuals believe that, given the flexibility of sexual choices, even the vision of a continuum falls short of the possible. Of the possible. Sexual identities can become about an acknowledgement of one's lifetime, of one's lifetime's loves rather than an inflexible dictation 
to select some particular proposition of relationships with women and men, women or men. As gender roles dissolve, individuals can begin to love and make love with particular human beings rather than with a quote unquote woman or a quote unquote man. A heterosexist, as heterosexism and sexism dissipate, the assumption here is that both will, sexual preference will become unimportant. Bisexual women are often aware of the implications of choosing their identity. Barbara, quote, I've always been one to hate labels. Even though bisexuality is a label, it's a label which allows me to be flexible. That's the way I've lived my life. People get threatened because someone that says they're bisexual allows that openness and fluidity, sorry, and fluidness of identity. That can be threatening because it means that you can relate to anybody, that you can have a connection to anybody that's willing to relate on an intimate level, end quote. Until sexual relationships are selected in an atmosphere of total freedom, using the labels lesbian, bisexual, or heterosexual makes sense as a personal, psychological, and political tool. Such labels are useful to organize information about sexual experience, to establish cohesive communities, and to mobilize activists on behalf of sexual freedom. A new vision for closeness. Because bisexuals consider all people potential friends or lovers, they break down cultural rigidities about sexual and emotional closeness. Bisexuals seek closeness without co concession to the, con to the constructed obstacles of socialization. They can become close to any person along a fluid line from acquaintance to, to intimacy, deciding whether sex will be a part of a relationship or not. A bisexual's relationship, sorry, a bisexual's relationships can spontaneously shift along the line of affection, having distinctions between closeness and sex and unintentionally or intentionally creating new forms of relationships. Often, bisexuals define themselves as much by their constellation of commitment friendships as by their sexual relationships. Many choose to ask themselves more complex questions about short and long-term relationships of monogamy and non-monogamy than their lesbian or heterosexual peers. Thus, they call into question society's values as well as rules of relationship. Bisexuals relate stories of relationships that transcend traditional boundaries between romance and friendship. Allison, quote, right now I'm close to a woman with whom I've agreed not to have a sexual relationship. We've agreed to sort of surrogate mother each other. There's an intimacy line and on one end there's, a sex there's sexuality What's going on is that there are people in my life and sexuality isn't the highest thing in the world, end quote. Bisexuals describe complex networks of friends. One might spend one night a week sleeping with someone she has no sexual relationship with, one night maintaining several friendships she considers lifelong. One might live and co-parent with a co committed friend. Bisexuals reinterpret social constructions of friendships, romances, and families. Bisexuality and women's liberation. A substantial majority of bisexual identified women consider themselves feminists, 90% in the BBWN poll. That's the Boston Bisexual Women's Network in 1984 poll and see that their sexual and emotional self-determination within the context of the empowerment of women. Bisexual spontaneous selection of relationships with both women and men relies on an assumption that although sexism remains ubiquitous, men are not the enemy. Within the identity of a bisexual feminist, there is an awareness and a firm stance against sexism, as well as an acceptance of heterosexual relationships as a viable option. Allison says, quote, People are people. That's probably my highest reality in terms of my politics. No matter what color you are, you're people. And no matter what gender you are, you're people, end quote. <laughs> 
Bisexuals perceive distinct challenges in relationships with men versus relationships with women and assume both experiences are valuable. In relationships with women, they grapple with homophobia, lesbian oppression, and internalized sexism among women, such as competition and insecurity. In relationships with men, they grapple with heterosexism, their anti-female, their anti-male feelings, and sexism, both external and internalized. The particular obstacles in relationships with either gender are significantly different in a sexist society, and bisexuals' choices to love and make love with women or men have real effects on their lives. Relationship choices influence their daily sexuality, their livelihoods, their political work, and their sense of self. Many bisexual women think out the ramifications of these decisions carefully. They select relationships with particular people conscious of, but often not deferring to, the resulting societal costs and benefits. Envisioning that as sexism and heterosexism fade, such choices will become a personal preference without political underpinnings. Thus, bisexuals aim to stretch past quote-unquote man-identified, past quote-unquote woman-identified, to a new capacity to self-identify, to define themselves by their selves. Many bisexuals respect those women throughout history who have chosen separate separatist lifestyles, making sensible choices given vicious sexu- sexism and few options for escaping the severe limitations imposed on them by society. Bisexual women, however, choose relationships with men who act out of relatively little sexism and are willing to unlearn the sexist conditioning that was passed down to them. Barbara describes her former male lovers in this way, quote, I always tended to relate to men that were more womanly in a lot of ways, who had more characteristics that were feminine, more sensitive, more gentle, end quote. Allison and Dave have deliberately structured their relationship outside the sex role constraints, quote, I'm the one who's bringing home the money. He has dinner cooked, he has dinner cooked, and he listens to me and cares what happens to me. Sexually, he waits for me to make the move, which is a pretty phenomenal thing, I think, in a man, end quote. In loving both women and men, bisexuals violate social rules about womanhood and manhood. Between both worlds. Bisexual women are mavericks within both the heterosexual and lesbian communities. Bisexuals struggle to defy myths of their self-delusion. You're really a heterosexual or you're really a lesbian. Promiscuity and indecisiveness indecisiveness, myths that arise amid widespread confusion about sexuality and closeness. Allison and Barbara both come up against such myths. Allison, quote, one myth, myth is the question of loyalty or monogamy. Even though plenty of bisexuals are monogamous, just the word itself puts that into question. There's always a question no matter what you're doing. The word somehow implies that there's a conflict, end quote. Barbara, quote, there's another myth that bisexuality is just a transition time when you're really gay, but you're afraid to admit it. You're on the fence. And when you have when you eventually decide where you really want to do what you really want to do, you'll realize that you want to be a lesbian, which doesn't give us a whole lot of validation for who we are. I feel like I if sorry, I feel like if I come out to my family as a bisexual, They'll hold on to the bisexual versus lesbian end of it and still be thinking that I'm going to get married. See it as a phase or that it's not valid as much, end quote. Bisexuality can, in fact, be a transitory stopping point for some, just as heterosexuality and lesbianism can be for others. Bisexually identified women may avoid a frightening lesbian identity, just as a lesbian identified woman may avoid a frightening bisexual identity. Like others, bisexuals choose to act on some of their sexual attractions. No evidence exists that bisexuals have any more or less sex than anyone else, nor that they require simultaneous female and male lovers for sexual satisfaction. While Allison exemplifies a non-monogamous bisexual at points in her sexual history, Barbara explicitly seeks monogamous relationship. Quote, to me, Non-monogamy violates so many of the basic ideas of relationships that involve trust and feeling secure and having open communication. I have never had a relationship that I would perceive as a potential partnership where it wasn't monogamous, end quote. 
bisexuals, it appears, are as monogamous as their lesbian and heterosexual partners. The, no the monogamous bisexual is a comprehensible, as comprehensible as the celibate or monogamous lesbian or heterosexual. Heterosexuals and lesbians often fear bisexuals presumed relationship shifts and non-monogamy. First, members of this culture operate on a scarcity mentality about closeness and sex. Insular homes and partitioned workplaces leave us chronically isolated and internalizing messages about a, mi a single Mr. or Mrs. Wright leaves us frantically searching for and clutching at relationships. Perceived as unwilling to commit themselves to a single relationship or even a single gender, bisexuals threaten their potential lovers with infidelity and everyone else with rivalry. Second, both heterosexuals and lesbians rely on arguments that sexual preferences, sexual preference is involuntary and immutable, even biologically determined. Because anyone can be targeted with lesbian or gay oppression and expelled from the heterosexual community and culture, heterosexuals hold tight to their identity. Bisexuals demonstrate that heterosexuality is neither inherent nor provable, and that one can, quote unquote, suddenly begin a lesbian or gay relationship. Lesbians, too, cling to their identity for a sense of personal security and community membership. Barbara says, quote, bisexuality shakes up the mores of both the straight world and the gay and lesbian world because there aren't as many hard set rules. When there are no rules, people have to really go into themselves and sexuality becomes a much more introspective process. The overall group isn't as much of a factor. You have to come from your own center and take risks, end quote. Although the lesbian community has sometimes described politically political sorry although the lesbian community has sometimes prescribed political grounds for choosing a lesbian identity the lesbian and gay rights movement has often relied on the concept of immutable sexual identity as a political strategy bisexuals by their very existence sabotage that strategy bisexuals break heterosexual rules about sex roles sexuality and closeness with women heterosexuals sometimes treat bisexuals as chic intriguing turn-ons, and at other times as repulsive deviant turn-offs. Heterosexual medical practitioners commonly treat bisexuals as pathological victims of quote-unquote sexual identity disorders or simply having quote-unquote lesbian tendencies. Bisexuals break lesbian rules too about politics, sexuality, and closeness with men. Bisexuals often describe themselves as outsiders in lesbian communities misunderstood for their identity, and afraid of lesbians' rejection. As lesbian culture has gained a set of distinct norms, the status of bisexual women as members or non-members has surfaced as a key issue. To create a covert system for identifying one another in an oppressive culture and to provide fe a feeling of safety and unity within the resulting subculture, lesbians have developed rules for belonging. Unspoken dress codes, politically correct vocabulary, and prescriptions for relationships all hold out the possibility of trust. Bisexuals break the rules, and the penalty is distrust. Lesbian activism created a lesbian community that helped form women's first alternative to compulsory heterosexuality. As lesbian rights are won, however, the rules for membership can begin to relax. Welcome from the lesbian community need no longer depend on any particular identifying characteristic or even promises of quote-unquote women lovers only. Many lesbians blame bisexual women for their supposed ability to pass as heterosexual. Indeed, bisexuals can take advantage of quote-unquote heterosexual privilege when they are presumed to be heterosexual or when they choose visible relationships with men and the associated benefits. Yet, if heterosexual privileges are rights belonging to people of all sexual choices, then those who enjoy heterosexual privilege, whether unwittingly or intentionally for personal gain, public safety, or political strategy, do not deserve blame. Any denial of these rights is wrong. Barbara puts it this way, quote, I feel that choosing a bisexual identity places me more into the gay and lesbian community. The issues that affect gay men and lesbians affect me just as strongly. Politically, I have to make a lot of the same choices and put myself out there as much. I know I could go somewhere with a man and that it would be much easier for me to play straight than for a lesbian. But that ends up feeling like a joke 
to me instead of the fact that I have privilege, end quote. Within both the lesbian and bisexual communities, some choose risky visibility, while others choose careful secrecy. Only externalized and ex internalized oppression stands in the way of a bisexual or lesbian becoming entirely visible. Coming out can be a contextual decision rather than a moral obligation. Thus, bisexual women walk a tightrope between the myths and fears of both the heterosexual and lesbian communities. Pressure to identify with one community or the other invalidates bisexuals' deepest sense of themselves. They cope with lesbian oppression without the full support of the lesbian community. They cope with sexism in relationships with men without the full support of the heterosexual community. Even more than lesbian and sexist oppression, the mistreatment of bisexuals is generally trivialized in our culture. In reality, the bisexual experience can be less than the best of both worlds. Bisexuals persist in these choices despite the pain of a path apart from either traditional heterosexual experience or recently developed mores of lesbian culture. Simultaneously, bisexuals are uniquely situated to serve as knowledgeable ambassadors both between heterosexuals and lesbians. Allison, quote, I want to come out as much as possible so people can know it's part of what people are. Still, I can do a lot for lesbian rights by my straight side showing. I can let people hear that somebody like me who has a family thinks that this is okay and important, and maybe that they're, when their kids say I'm gay, they won't fall apart. In women's groups, sometimes I'll have a whole evening and not say I'm married because that isn't part, that isn't the part of me that I want to talk about or want to be at that point. Two years ago, I stopped wearing my wedding ring deliberately because I didn't want the rights nor the bondage just because I had that ring around my finger, end quote. Heterosexuals and lesbians may better understand bisexuals when they realize it is possible for bisexuals to act as excellent allies to members of both communities. For full acceptance of any sexual identity within an awareness of heterosexism and sexism, one needs to assume that any person can be an ally for another. Heterosexual for lesbian, lesbian for bisexual, bisexual for heterosexual, etc. The bisexual community. Distinct bisexual communities have emerged internationally in the last five years. When two researchers on bisexuality searched for bisexual organizations in 1977, they discovered only, quote, embryonic rap groups, end quote. Since then, 20 years have been established, sorry, 20 groups have been established across the United States, and a London organization continues to grow after its founding in 1981. In less than two years, the Boston Bisexual Women's Network mushroomed from a support group of six to a mailing list of more than 500. Bisexual organizations are homelands for women who might receive a lukewarm reception in existing lesbian and heterosexual communities. Mm -hmm. Such organizations support bisexual identified women once isolated from one another and form a foothold for women stepping toward a bisexual identity. They are without rules for entrance or membership and offer, offer implicit permission to make commitments and transitions without normative constraints. Allison relates how a bisexual woman's meeting allowed her to resolve her years of internal conflict and feel at home with a bisexual identity. The existence of visible bisexual organizations has undoubtedly helped support an increase in the number of women who now identify themselves as bisexuals. Participants in the bisexual community make a full spectrum of sexual choices. From those who relate exclusively or almost exclusively in heterosexual communities, from those who relate exclusively or almost exclusively in lesbian communities. The 
four poll of the bisexual, Boston Bisexual Women's Network members confirmed this distribution. 3.3% describes their sexuality exclusively as lesbian. 6.5% as mostly lesbian. 23% as more lesbian than heterosexual. 37.7% as both equally. 23% as more heterosexual than lesbian. And 6.5% as mostly heterosexual and none as exclusively heterosexual. Implications for the therapist. Guidelines and suggestions for therapists are often useful for anyone who wishes to support someone's sexual identity and growth, including friends, lovers, family, co-workers, and co-activists. As more information is generated about the nature of sexual identity and activity in particular, and in particular the bisexual experience, the therapist needs to reevaluate the theoretical assumptions and content of what she communicates as counselor and educator. First, the therapist must assume that any sexual identity is psychologically and morally acceptable. This can create a safe atmosphere for the client to share her sexual history and current sexual experiences. The therapist is responsible for conveying a clear undertone of support, validating the client's sexual life by asking open-ended questions about her joys and challenges. <clears throat> Second, the therapist needs to accompany the client through the evolution of her sexual choices. Operating on, on an assumption that no particular sexual identity is necess necessarily transient or permanent, the therapist can assist the client with a lifelong process rather than short-term goals. This means assisting the client towards a sense of satisfaction with her history and towards an open-minded contemplation of her present and future. Any client exploring her sexual identity and activity needs to look at her feelings about lesbianism, bisexuality, and heterosexuality. After she has discussed each set of feelings and worked to heal past difficulties associated with any particular identity, she can freely consider her own. The therapist's role is to assist that is to assist that healing and help the client decide what identity and what relationships are best for her outside of any preconception of the outcome. Third, the therapist must encourage the client to make deliberate, thoughtful decisions about when, where, and whether to announce her sexual identity. The individual needs to consider each situation anew and not rigidly stay visible or invisible. For example, a client who has a hazardous who would hazard her job by coming out at work must be must carefully weigh the risks and benefits of such a decision. Fourth, the therapist needs to be aware of the nature of the bisexual experience, including bisexual identity, bisexual relationships, and the bisexual community. This understanding will allow the therapist to better support any client contemplating her sexual identity or someone else's. In addition, this information aids in the understanding of heterosexual and lesbian experience. Finally, a group therapist needs to encourage members with different sexual identities to talk together about their individual experiences in an atmosphere of respect, confidentia respectful confidentiality, and trust. Women generally need opportunities to discuss the details of their sexual lives with one another, to educate them about the breadth of sexual experience and sexual options, to form a context for their own sexual choices, and to con counteract feelings of isolation with their questions about sexuality. Validation among women and men of different sexual preferences is rare in a culture of precarious sexual identity and extremely helpful to a client's full pride in her choices. Conclusion. This chapter provides preliminary description of the process of identifying as bisexual, what it is like to come out as a bisexual, how bisexuals are victimized by lesbian oppression, bisexuals experience among heterosexuals and lesbians, how bisexuals perceive their various relationships, the dynamics of the bisexual community, and bisexuals' political beliefs. Bisexuals' lives provide new psychological and social understandings of sexuality and closeness, highlighting the me mechanisms of sexual decision-making as potentially self-determined actions. Research is needed about all areas of bisexual experience, including studies of common qualities of bisexuals, therapeutic case studies, and longitudinal studies of bisexual relationships. The bisexual experience calls into question traditional definitions of the nature of sexual identity development. Fluid, ambiguous, subversive, multifarious, bisexuality can no longer be ignored. 